Fraser Institute's look at some of the week's key news stories. I'm Leah Costello. At the Canadian Medical Association's annual convention held last week in Saskatoon, outgoing President Robert Ouellette discussed his study of health systems in five European countries. He says that now more than ever, there's an urgent need for change within Canada's health system and that that change should include involving the private sector in the delivery and funding of care. His parting words, what are we waiting for? Nadim Esmail, Fraser Institute Director of Health Performance Studies, joins us today to weigh in on this issue. Nadim, is Ouellette correct? Is there an immediate need for reform? There is an urgent need for change. Access to healthcare services for Canadians is a serious problem in terms of access to medical professionals, access to modern medical technologies, and in terms of wait times for medically necessary healthcare services. Uh, the impact this has on patients is quite challenging. Uh, for example, those waiting for care will suffer mental anguish, pain and suffering, lost productivity at work and leisure, uh, strained personal relationships, and may even have a negative impact on their ability to look after themselves and their loved ones. Uh, and this is all in addition to the costs of longer recovery as a result of not having access to modern te medical technologies or the potential negative medical consequences of having waited too long for medically necessary health care. So when anyone suggests that we have greater private sector involvement in the healthcare system, proponents of the status quo scream that this will Americanize healthcare. Are you advocating for an American style healthcare system when you call for greater involvement of the private sector? Not at all. For Canadians, the choice is not between what we have now and an American style healthcare program. Rather, it's a choice between what we have now and what is a better way to deliver universal access to healthcare services. We're not talking about abandoning Canada's compassionate approach to healthcare, but we're seeking better ways to deliver on that promise of universal access to high quality care in a time frame that provides comfort and peace of mind. And we have to recognize that this is a promise that Canada's governments are breaking on a daily basis in this country, while other developed nations are doing a much better job at keeping that promise for their citizens in their universal access health care programs. Dr. Ouellette raises Europe as a model for health care reform. What models should we be considering, and should we be considering European nations and what we can learn from them? Uh, there is a great deal we can learn from European nations and from other developed countries. Uh, for example, seven developed nations maintain universal access health care insurance programs without queues for treatment. Uh, patients in Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, Japan, Luxembourg, and Switzerland all have access to health care services regardless of ability to pay, but they don't have to line up to receive that health care the way we do here in Canada. Uh, in other nations like Sweden, they've found ways through reform to deliver better access to health care services uh, cost efficiently. And keep in mind that all of these healthcare systems cost the same or less than Canada's healthcare system. And what have these European countries done to specifically successfully reduce or eliminate wait times? Uh, one of the main things these countries do is to rely on a policy backbone of private competition and appropriate financial incentives for patients and providers. Uh, by that I mean they rely on private com competitive providers to deliver the publicly funded or universally available health care. They allow patients to access a private parallel health care sector uh, if they desire to do so. And they require patients to share in the cost of the care they consume through user fees, co-payments or deductibles. Uh, these nations also endeavor to have health care dollars follow the patients through the healthcare system through policies like activity-based funding for hospital care. Uh, and that's quite different from the way we pay for hospital services in Canada. Uh, here in Canada, we give the hospitals an amount of money every year and tell them, okay, go look after patients, which actually gives them the incentive to not focus on patients in order to preserve the budget. In these countries, in many of these countries, they use activity-based funding where hospitals are paid for the conditions they treat. Uh, for example, in Sweden, the switch from global budgets like we use in Canada to activity-based funding uh, led to an 8% increase in inpatient care, a 50% increase in day surgeries, and a 15% increase in outpatient visits, all for 1% lower total costs uh, as a result of the better incentives that are ingrained in an activity-based funding model. Thanks, Nadim, and thank you so much for joining us this week. Make sure that you get our episodes as soon as they're posted. Make sure that you've subscribed to the Fraser Institute channel on YouTube or to the RSS feed at FraserInstitute.org. We'll see you next week for Fraser Fast Track.